What is up guys, my name is Quantum FPV, and today we're going to be talking about Robot Arm. Why? Well, the reason is actually quite tragic. A few months ago, I really wanted to make a robotic arm, but I couldn't afford it, so I made it virtually. I was very excited once I got it to work. I even made a demonstration animation of it drawing a circle. But after my dad told me how disappointed he was, I got very sad. I feared that should I show him anything more lackluster than this, he might disown me. So the moment I could afford parts, I got to work on the real deal and was going to make it even more capable than my digital first attempt. For my first crack at a real robotic arm, not just a software one, I decided to step up my game. The arm would be capable of moving its end to not just any point in 2D space, but anywhere in 3D space. Since 3D space has 3Ds, I couldn't just stick with two joints, so I had to add a third one. To actually make the arm move, I planned on using an Arduino I stole from my roommate and some 3D printed parts, in addition to three of the cheapest servers I could find, and a whole lot of math. In the end, I got a robotic arm that's excellent at pointing, drawing circles, square, and even drawing P. Pretty cool, right? So how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Basically, the program asks, where do you want the arm to go? You supply it with an X, Y, Z coordinate in millimeters. And then, the real fun begins. The program now has to calculate the angle of all three servos in order to find the position of the end of the arm at the point you supplied. The first servo calculated is the base servo. The math for this servo is actually relatively easy. If we look at the arm from a top-down view, we can represent it as a line protruding from the origin of the XY plane. If we draw a right triangle, we can see that the adjacent side always corresponds to the X value, while the opposite side always corresponds to the Y value. Since tangent of theta equals opposite divided by adjacent, theta equals arctangent of opposite divided by adjacent. This angle is the angle that the base servo rotates to. The second servo calculated is the first joint. Shown here is a visual representation of the arm on its side. Since the arm doesn't actually rotate on the table, but rather on an elevated small platform, the height needs to be taken into account when calculating the angle of joint one. There are two geometrical scenarios here. One where joint one's angle is greater than zero, and one in which joint one's angle is less than zero. Since the robot is designed for drawing and the tip of the sharpie will never really go above this offset height, I didn't even bother doing the math for the positive angle situation. Why? <laughs> because A, I couldn't figure it out, and B, I don't really need to. So here's the situation we have. The way that I ended up solving this was by splitting it up into two smaller problems. First, I used the law of cosines to calculate this angle, and then, by finding the length of this line, I calculated the second angle. The distance between the two angles is the resulting angle required for J1, if the Z height is less than the offset, that is. This particular servo is the one that took me the longest time to debug. In fact, the math for this servo was completely wrong in the first few runs, which uh, resulted in some pretty bad Z height control. The third servo is also uh, ah. the third servo is also relatively easy to calculate, just a little more complicated than the first servo. Again, all we need to do is use the law of cosines, but make sure we subtract the result from 180 degrees, since the second angle is relative to the first arm. And there we have it. With the math worked out, there was only one thing left to do. Draw a circle. The first times were rough, uh, because this was before I realized that my math was wrong. Like any good programmer, I blamed the mechanical accuracy of the arm, and arrogantly assumed that all my math was perfect. Late that night, however, I realized it wasn't. I tried to solve it, but uh, at 2 a.m. I gave up and I went to sleep. When I woke up the next day, I redesigned the arm and fixed the math. Since I had such bad luck drawing circles, I decided to keep it simple and just draw a square this time. I held my breath, clicked go, and sure enough, it drew something that resembled a square. Even though it wasn't exactly the best square, it was a hell of a lot better than the circles I was drawing just a few hours ago. This time though, the problems really are because of the mechanical limitations of the servos and the design, not the math. At least, I think. Uh, with the robot drawing squares absolutely perfectly, I decided that I would try and get it to draw letters. After spending three hours getting it to draw this pretty sus A, I decided to give up, because I didn't have another three hours to draw every other alphabet letter. All in all, this robot doesn't draw too well, but it achieves the initial goal pretty well. This baby is capable of positioning that sharpie within just a few millimeters of the actual point, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. In the future, I hope to make a new version which utilizes vector math instead of trig and much nicer hardware. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. And there you have it, my progress thus far on this robotic arm. Guess it's time to see if my dad's proud of me. Oh. Oh well. This video took a lot longer than my normal ones, so definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed. See you guys later.